Have you been able to join? I can give you the link. Okay, so it is. Why can't I scroll? Scroll. Here it is. Meeting ID 241 66153. Two four one six 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 one five three. Uh, why don't you watch both? Yeah, exactly. Is that, is that still working? Oh, yeah. That probably helps. Do you like the massive, like, dongle connectivity of Zoom with Dr. Long here? Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome. Is that working? Yeah. Gather yourself some lunch and find a seat. Mic check, mic check, mic check. Mic check, mic check, mic check. Mic check, mic check. Mic check, mic check, mic check. Better? All right. Yeah, this one we want to turn up the record. Well, I can only turn up the output. I mean, the sound guy. Nice. But it was as CTO, but not. It was like the second day pre you know, uh, you know. Yeah, you just introducing like reverse. Yeah. Like yeah. It up. <laughs> I mean, do you. Uh, hey, way over there. Well, you we weren't here. We, we, can, we can pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too far away. Pass that to the other side. It looks like they've inserted it over here. Exactly. It's really close together. <laughs> All right. Well, exactly. right. Whatever. Whatever. I can just sit here. I've been here. Yeah, he does. I'm feeling heavy looking at how you set up the top. Yeah, you got like a protein. 
Tomatoes. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make it work. So. so what does that mean though mostly vegetarian? Um so it's mostly because I actually have I don't trust the US pizza Um So you will eat meat outside of the things? Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a big one. There's just too many, like, so like eight years ago, we took away the labor and loss pressure from um, our, uh, our pressure from that with Canada. We're Canada really pressuring us, like, hey, we don't want you to label the country of origin of meat. We don't have enough slaughterhouses. The U.S. has loads of slaughterhouses, so we want to bring our cattle over. And the slaughterhouse is like, well, you know what we want to do? You're gonna bring us a thousand head of cattle. I already have five thousand head of cattle waiting, so I'm just gonna give you a thousand head of cattle the meat. And I'm gonna mix this. And that's how you get like this mix of meat, is because it just the, the supply is just like trying to push it through to make it demand. So I just removed myself from the van and I was like, I know where it came from. Hi everyone, we're going to get started in just a minute, so grab your lunch, find a seat, and we'll get ready to go shortly. All right, please take your seats, everybody. All right, I'm gonna, hi, everybody. Uh, uh, my name's Adam Goodman. I'm a professor at Northwestern University, and I also chair the uh, board of directors uh, for the Drupal Association. Uh, welcome to our meeting. Um, I was thinking it would be nice, since we're a relatively uh, modest group, just for people to, who are here to just kind of go around and introduce themselves and just say hello. So we can start here and we'll work through the outside and then we'll come back to the inner you know, inside. Uh, I'm Steve Bird. I run a company called OS Training. Um, and we're here, we did a couple of days of training uh, Monday, Tuesday. Great, thank you. I'm Mark Dorison. I'm a partner and the technical director at Matt. Doug Green, I'm a long time digital contributor and I'm on the tech. Okay, let's go over here. Okay. Say hi. You You're missed one, Adam. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad. My name is Matthew Butters. I've uh, been running the Drupal Cup since 2006, 2007. Um, with the Pfizer right now. And uh, um, I'm an export member as well. Okay, so you can have Michael Lamb's vote since he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Going around. I've been Drupal Zealot for 12 years, open to opportunity. Okay. I'm Bada Ibanara from 6-7, the Eddie Pack. And Jeff Blue, I'm the designer of the Drupal Zealot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It does look great. Yeah. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, 
Okay. That's great. Ryan, you want to start us going around this way? <laughs> he just wandered off the street. We're not really sure who that is. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm Tim Lennon. I'm the interim executive director for the DA. We'll go back this way. Yeah. I'm disrupting this way, it comes back this way. That's uh, uh, I was gonna say, you said that it sounded like one very long name. <laughs> There, <laughs> there are definite stops in there. Definite stops in there somewhere, and I'm certain that we have an agenda here somewhere. We do. So we're going to go through some updates uh, from the Drupal Association board retreat that we had on the weekend prior um, to DrupalCon. Uh, talk a, talk a little bit about that. What the various committees have done. Um, I'm going to talk about some additions to the DA staff. Um, give a general sort of operational update about what's been going on at the association, um, what we've learned from DrupalCon and what we're planning to carry through to the next coming DrupalCons. Um, talk about a couple of our programs, some of which I mentioned in the introduction to the Drew's note this morning. So that's a little bit of a repeat, I apologize. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So um, I think though there's some order of business for the board itself related to our minutes. Um, I need a, a motion to approve the minutes from the February 14th, 2019 meeting. <laughs> okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right, motion passes. I think my job here is actually done now. So. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So some updates from the retreat. Um, so, so we had uh, various committees report out from the, from the board. There are a number of committees that track the kind of uh, health and well-being of different aspects of the Drupal Association. Um, so the Finance Committee met. Um, they've been following the progress of this year's DrupalCon, resuming, uh, reviewing our financial plan for 2019, and our voluntary audit, which was at the beginning of this year. Um, if the Finance Committee has any comments or things they'd like to add, um, Yes, I waited exactly until you took a huge bite. Yeah, no pressure. Now I've got like quinoa everywhere. <laughs> All right, now I've lost track. <laughs> Any financial <laughs> updates? Audit. Um, so the comments that we, we, had, we had talked about the retreat, and I think um, our, our good uh, uh, public, public board meeting are, we've made huge progress in our financial reporting in the past about two years. Um, and part of that was around how do we report um, some of our fiscal sponsorships with what we did with camps, where we received money on behalf of camps and held that in our, our bank account. Now that that's sort of dwindling, but it was very, a little difficult about two years ago to really un, unwind this in a, in a visual way or a very simple, easy way to digest. Um, so we had met this, this, this weekend and we're very pleased on all the iterations we've done on our financial reporting uh, are really now representing in an easy to digest way for both the board consumption and public consumption of where we stand as an organization, which is very solid. Uh, uh, the other is we want to just commend the staff because uh, we did just go through a voluntary audit that went very well. So we had um, some folks come in and they did quite well. 
So just all around, very good things. Uh, no one in the staff doing that. Um, uh, Tim for taking up the helm and in a, in a very sort of like, oh, <laughs> here's a change way, and you coming on um, and really just yeah, hitting the ground running, uh, doing some really great things. So we've been very impressed. Uh, we're just happy to announce and, and, and public about it that you know we're on good financial ground. Our financial reporting is done very well, and uh, you know, we have things to prove it. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. On to the next committee. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, the governance committee uh, met as well, um, and during the board retreat, talked about a few things. Reviewing our progress against the governance task force recommendations that were published last year. Um, and that was a, a significant effort on the part of various members of the community to suggest some things that might change in the community and uh, with respect to governance. Um, and here at the con, they're uh, engaged in an effort to update the issues that have been opened then to talk about the various ways that we've made some progress in those areas. And then we also reviewed other governance uh, initiatives like the uh, effort to organize uh, local association leaders. So I don't know. Um, if perhaps Suzanne or Vishal might want to speak on any of these topics. So the governance committee, what we talked about, was more around how to get a consistent branding across the region. So in terms of providing a group more in line with what the EA is thinking, and then take it to all the different geographies uh, which are wanting to do a camp or a triple con, those kind of things. So that was one of the initiatives that we were trying to work around. It was more in regards to how to provide the consistent message. So uh, again, how to bring the community together, how to kind of make sure that there is a sense of involvement and the engagement with the community. So I guess we made a progress in terms of uh, trying to put up some kind of a planning guide, so to speak, uh, to, to take this governance ahead to multiple geographies. And another outcome of the task force um, has been a proposal to have a closer collaboration between uh, local event organizers and associations to provide some better uh, ability to uh, promote local events and, and coordinate the efforts of local. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, I, then, just, I just want to quickly add, I know Dries has thanked the uh, folks who worked on the governance task force, you know, that, that you put together. And I just wanted to thank um, uh, Adam and the other folks who just put in an extraordinary amount of time, gave us a lot of great ideas. And uh, Tim has responded at, at some length in terms of a blog post on that. And this is not a report that's been on a shelf. It's been something that we revisited during our retreat. We've talked about sort of which ones we think we can advance. We've liked the ideas and we're working on it. So I just wanted to sort of acknowledge their efforts and the fact that it's picked up some nice momentum. Awesome, so for the next committee report, this was for the revenue committee, reviewing the current revenue programs of the Drupal Association, the things that fund all of our mission work and make um, what we do possible and working on an exercise to prioritize some of those new initiatives. Um, I don't know if we have any particular commentary on that front, just that we had some good exercises going on there. Um, would anyone like to add some color? I think we'll play some of these a little closer to the chest as we're developing some of these new ideas. So <laughs> here we go. Um, next committee. So the nominating committee met um, to talk about the, um, you know, the, the seats that are rolling off in the coming year, the next community election. Um, Abby, unfortunately, is not here with us today, but just as an update for uh, anybody who might be in the audience, this is the current uh, state of terms for the existing members of the board. Um, and the nominating committee is currently in a process of outreach to develop new candidates. Um, and, uh, um, will be running the next community election this summer uh, for the seat that Ryan vacates in that time. So, 
Uh, finally, just I'm sure it's on several people's minds. Uh, I've said the word interim executive director a few times in different presentations. Um, so I'm, I'm sure people are wondering what's going on with that. So uh, the executive search is making good progress. Uh, we hired a search firm. Um, we've been pleased with the candidate pool. Would you have anything to add, Adam? No, I, um, I guess I was supposed to answer yes. Um, with, um, which is, um, I've been really pleased with the uh, engagement that we have with the search committee, um, which is uh, comprised of a handful of folks from the board, uh, plus Tiffany Ferris, if folks know Tiffany. Um, and, you know, we're, um, we're proceeding nicely. Uh, it's one of those things where I can't speak too much more than that because it is a confidential search on the part of the candidates who are participating. Um, but um, I think from the search committee's perspective, um, we're really pleased with who we're talking with. Uh, we're very excited about the opportunity going forward. Um, we think we're going to have a great executive director, uh, you know, based on who's in the pool right now. Um, and, um, and I have every confidence that, you know, that we're going to continue to just pick up momentum as a result of, of the person that we hire. Awesome. I think from here, um, yeah, I just wanted to, to talk about the staff briefly as the beginning of my operational update. So these are all the current members of the Drupal Association team. You'll see some faces that you recognize and perhaps some that you don't. Um, but these are uh, all of us who work together to, to support Drupal.org, to support DrupalCon. You've seen all these people pretty much running left and right all over this uh, conference venue. So just wanted to say, if you see any of these folks, say thank you. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Um, and if you have any ideas for our programs, um, feel free to share it with this group of people. Um, in particular, we're welcoming two new members and it's very relevant here at DrupalCon. So Carly is joining us as the new director of events and she's been all over the place here. And uh, Bethany as a DrupalCon coordinator. So you may have seen the two of them uh, going up and down the escalators, making sure that this event uh, goes off as well as it has. So we're really, really thrilled um, to uh, welcome them to the team. Um, I also wanted to talk about uh, a change recently for the community working group that I mentioned on stage, which is um, the community working group updated their charter uh, in December of last year, um, I believe is when the new charter was adopted. Um, and this means that they now have a new escalation path. Um, and this new escalation path is for, uh, in, the, in, in the event, um, why am I forgetting the word? Uh, in the event of a uh, protest of a decision made by the CWG or something of that sort, um, they, uh, that is now handled by a committee that's made up of the uh, two community elected seats. Oh, excuse me, I had other programs to talk about, but um, go to ahead, one more. Uh, a committee of the two elected seats, uh, com community elected seats of the board, as well as an independent uh, sort of third party representative that the uh, community elected positions have interviewed and spoken to. So they had selected uh, Joan o. Bacon, who's well known for community development, community management, and um, kind of learning how to engage with communities in this way to be our kind of outside voice and outside advisor, uh, should it be necessary. And if we go back to slides, part of the reason that's exciting is because these changes are enabling uh, the community working group, I hope, to expand what they do in a, in a really proactive way. Instead of just being a conflict resolution body, they can now be about proactive community health about leadership training. Uh, they have legal support that can come from the Drupal Association and this new independent escalation body. Um, there's a few things going on. One thing I wanted to point you to in particular uh, was just a, a basic uh, introduction to the CWG. If you haven't had that experience before, there's going to be a session tomorrow uh, about fostering community health and demystifying the purpose of the community working group. So I'd encourage people to attend that. Um, I just want to... It's, it's unusual for me to have an opportunity to say thank you in public. Um, I want to say thank you um, because the uh, CWG uh, came to us and said, hey, can we talk about, you know, uh, restructuring, reorganizing and being able to make some investments. And it's one of those things where I think we've scaled in so many ways, so many positive ways, a, um, a healthy and vibrant community. Um, and my own sense was that we had sort of 
reach the practical limits. Um, if you talk to the CWG members, um, it's fair to say that they verge on volunteer full-time to part-time jobs. Um, and the, uh, and the amount of, of time and care and diligence and thoughtfulness that they put into this, it, I mean, truly is extraordinary. And, um, I am just so happy that, you know, we were able to have the set of conversations that we had to think about how do we put you in a much more sustainable, uh, position, um, and, and for the, and for the association to begin to be able to make some investments to really help CWG along the way. I, I think that, you know, I know that uh, Dries has aspirations that we scale even larger than we are right now. And that's gonna require more of everything. And, you know, again, I think we're, well, we're, we're known for having a healthy community. That's gonna be harder as, as we continue to grow. And so, Thank you for the past. I'm really excited about where we're going to be able to go going forward. Two of them. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome, so now I'd like to talk a little bit, just again, as part of my operational update and the interim executive role, but just about what we've learned so far from DrupalCon Seattle, and I realize we're like right in the middle of it right now, but there's sort of a lot we've learned along the way. Um, so what did we change coming into this event? Obviously, as you've, you've all seen, there's been a lot of changes kind of coming through here. Um, there are new personas who've been invited. The, the core original kind of developer audience has now been made the developer, or excuse me, the builder track. Um, we've added an agency leadership track. We've added a content and digital marketing track and we hosted an executive summit for those decision makers at the end user organizations who choose, do we make our bet on Drupal? Um, and this has all been really successful. Um, we did make adjustments to attendee pricing and for supporter versus non-supporter rates. Um, these were all experiments. We adjusted our sponsor pricing. We added pre-selected featured speakers and we began our ticket sales much earlier. Now, a lot of these pricing changes, which I know have been somewhat controversial, really enabled us to do some amazing mission work. Like it's directly correlated with our ability to double the grants and sponsorships and the speaker inclusion fund. So it's extremely helpful in that way. Um, if we go on to the next slide. So what did we learn uh, from, the, from all of those changes? DrupalCon Seattle is tracking to have the highest attendance in DrupalCon history. We are, we will be announcing a final number on Thursday, so we'll see for sure if we hit that goal. But um, it's really very exciting and we're really thrilled that these changes had the positive impact that they did. Um, our audience has grown in all of those ways that I spoke about earlier. Um, and we have these increasingly diverse thought leaders in the community. Um, you know, 50% of our speakers coming from underrepresented groups, many of those being first time speakers here at the con. We're really excited about that. I won't dwell on that too much since we talked about it this morning. And then this is the demographic data from the 13,000 Drupal.org users who offered to, prov who, who opted in to provide it. It's an optional field on Drupal.org profiles. But this tells us a little bit about uh, representation based on a sample of those people who participated. And something we'll continue to track so that we can learn more about our community as we move forward. So what's next? Obviously DrupalCon Amsterdam is gonna be the next big event and we're really thrilled that it's, it's back uh, coming soon. Um, it'll be October 28th to 30th uh, in 2019. Um, and in fact, the call for papers is going to open this week Registration for Amsterdam will open this week um, and we're promoting it at the booth. There's some stickers. There's a selfie banner where you can say I'm going to be in Seattle, all that kind of thing. And we'll be making further announcements about the launch of uh, Amsterdam activities in the closing session. So, um, DrupalCon Minneapolis is going to be the next North American event and we want to talk about kind of what we're carrying forward based on our experience here in Seattle. So absolutely this uh, experiment of bringing these new personas in completely paid off. Like these are audiences who are part of the Drupal community, have always been part of the Drupal community, but did not get recognized in their own tracks, in their own places to have content. 
and it's just been wildly successful. In particular, the content and digital marketing track, which sold out more than a month in advance, um, uh, we're going to significantly expand going into Minneapolis. Uh, we want to continue early ticket sales. It's good for uh, the community to have more time to plan and get budget approvals. It's good for us because it levels out our cash flow. Um, we did early uh, featured speaker selection, and I think that was very helpful. It was nice creating some energy, and I saw a lot of that early on before we would normally be able to publish our full, full schedule. Um, and of course, we want to continue to increase our grants and scholarships as much as we can, uh, capitalizing on these changes to bring people who might not, not otherwise be able to attend. Um, so will we be changing anything in particular? Um, we may also try and economize a little bit. Um, you know, you've seen we're kind of scattered in a bunch of different places. There's a few ways that we might be able to bring some of these tracks slightly closer together and also have more cross-pollination. Uh, we talked about expanding the program. We might also experiment a little bit with targeting some of our pricing, maybe pr providing more sp support specifically for small nonprofits, things we couldn't do before because we operated on such thin margins. Um, quick update on Promote Drupal. I'm going to go through it very fast because it was in the introduction to the Dries note this morning, so most of you have seen it. We produced this video, which is going to be released. Um, go ahead and proceed and skip through. Yeah, so we produced a video which is going to be available Creative Commons licensed along with the like files that we use to actually build it. So if someone wants to localize the video, do a track in their own local language um, and reproduce it that way, that's going to be possible as well. Uh, we talked about the brand book, which was kind of the first step. That actually happens quite a while ago, but um, continues to be the, um, just the basis for ensuring that these international efforts for promoting Drupal have a unified look and feel. Um, in addition to that, um, come on, B. <laughs> oh, I thought you wanted to watch it. Sorry. No, no. Uh, the pitch deck that was put together largely by uh, the Promote Drupal volunteers. Um, Suzanne was involved in coordinating a large amount of this work, but Paul Johnson, many other people, a number of organizations uh, contributed to this. And similarly, um, it's a really powerful tool that I think will um, just, just help people get the word out about uh, what we're doing. Uh, again, I talked about a new case study format that will hopefully go live following the, the conference. We'll just skip quickly through that, but it's, uh, and then uh, I mentioned the GitLab migration this morning. This is something that we're hugely excited about. Um, and coming soon, the sort of next steps are um, enabling merge requests. Um, the GitLab team is here at DrupalCon. They're releasing a feature with their end of April release that uh, will help enable us to do this. Um, so once that release comes out and we have some time to do the UX design around that, feature. Um, that'll be coming soon. So we're really, really excited. Um, let's keep going here. Yeah, so phase one is complete. Phase two, just for reference, and phase three even, um, these are not going to be these big monolithic productions where we have to wait like 12 months, 18 months before we can release a, all the usable features all at once. From here on out, it's actually about incremental feature releases. So merge requests released as soon as we can enable them. CI pipelines when we can enable them. Other integrations when we can enable them. Um, um, so the other thing that we're doing and go, hopefully going to launch soon is a little bit of a redesign of the TriDrupal program. So I thought I would give just a quick sneak preview. Whoops. So, okay, so that you can hear me. So uh, the TriDrupal program has actually been a really successful program at the Drupal Association just because there were, have been a lot of evaluators who do not know what a tarball is, for example, and need to have a different kind of uh, demo experience in order to learn what Drupal is. But that really needs to go further and it needs to follow along with uh, the other work that we've done to uh, channel people through their various personas to what they need. So this new version of the page, which is not live yet, is going to have um, a sort of choose your experience, choose your own adventure version of TriDrupal. Um, and that's going to include things like that pitch video that we just saw, uh, and then uh, connection to our partners. It's going to include things like, hey, I just need to find a partner, or even just I want to talk to someone who can help. How do I do that? 
um, as well as just routing people back through more direct demo environments, technical environments, or to the download if that is genu genuinely what they need. So this is just something that'll be coming uh, pretty shortly after DrupalCon and that we're pretty excited about because I think it'll um, really help people find the right way to first understand what Drupal is uh, so that they can continue to engage with us further from there. Um, let's see if we can get back into, I guess since I'm here, I'll run my slides. Um, uh, I talked briefly about the Drupal Steward program. I'm not gonna repeat that content either, but uh, just basically there's a boff that happens just a little bit later today where we're talking about what we're doing. Again, this is a program jointly through the association and the security team um, that will help protect uh, Drupal sites uh, before the patch is released. Um, and that will, uh, uh, the proceeds of which will help fund the security team and Drupal association programs. So if you wanna learn more, this BOF is really where you need to go. Um, finally, we talked about it again a little bit this morning, but the European Commission partnership, um, uh, with, uh, we've actually partnered with them in multiple ways now. So uh, the FOSA program, the free and open source software, something administration, I don't know, um, uh, is, uh, has been working with all of their, the, the European Commission is heavily dependent on open source. They've, they've kind of standardized on it across all of their platforms and Drupal is a huge part of that. Um, so they funded a bug bounty program um, that uh, uh, to help Drupal find, find and fix vulnerabilities. That program has been very successful. And as Dries alluded to, uh, they funded as sort of a seed of the automatic updates initiative. So there's some limitations to what they're funding, which means we do still need contributors. They need things that are, to, they're, the way this program works, it's deliverables in this calendar year. Um, they need backports to D7 because they're still in a D7 world. Um, but we've made some good progress so far. We've already uh, designed and updated Drupal.org API to get the PSA and security information and display that information. And we're beginning to design the pre-flight checklist that will help sites know, am I eligible for an upgrade or have I customized something that might cause that to break my site? And there's some more opportunities for partnership with the European Commission. Um, they're considering adding a third sponsored hackathon this year and there's a chance it might be Drupal. Um, so uh, we're hopeful that that's a, the decision that they'll make. And the whole FOSA program, this whole open source funding program that they have um, is up to either be renewed for another trial year by the European Commission or become a permanent annual program uh, of the EU. Um, and if that happens, there's a very good chance that Drupal will be a consistent partner um, since so much of what they do is done on Drupal. So we're very excited about that, uh, that possibility. Um, so from here, I want to give the board an opportunity to ask questions and then we'll open up to the audience if they have a few as well. Also, please use a microphone for the sake of the recording. Yeah, and um, if anybody is going to ask questions, there's a microphone here next to the projector and one here at the table for folks. How did you find that? Um, Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> this is for Dries here. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've I have two questions. Um, the first one is around promote Drupal. Yeah. So you think there's an opportunity to actually run an, a campaign using the material? I mean, or is there any thoughts on coordinating something? I think there is. I think the, the question is a little bit a matter of scope and resources is always right. And so the phase one was like, doing initiative coordination, almost like we do with CORE and getting all these international groups together to build materials. Now that we have some materials, I think the idea of doing a coordinated campaign would be very, very cool. And we've begun to have networks to, of, for example, local association leaders or event leaders who say, hey, if, if there's a press release that comes out, we will take responsibility for translating in our local markets and pushing it to those local areas. So I think, I think there's a good chance for that. Um, we still have to figure out how to activate that well. Michelle, did you want to um, in the Netherlands, um, should I go to microphone? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Just, we have remote participants who'd love to be able to hear right. it, so. Ron is going to line up. <laughs> <laughs> this is Dries, uh, yeah. Um, no, in the Netherlands, uh, the local association has a partnership uh, with RTL, which is one of the largest broadcasters, um, and they've been uh, collaborating closely together uh, in promoting Drupal uh, and doing interviews, even with Dries uh, with uh, on the airport, um, and uh, have been showcasing 
uh, uh, quite a few Drupal projects already uh, online. Um, and this could be one of, an example of one of those partnerships in which we can also uh, share the, um, uh, the video that's being produced, the, the, the commercial. Uh, so I see a lot of opportunities there. Um, I know, for example, that in Belgium, uh, they are working uh, on a program similar to uh, the Dutch uh, local association. And uh, I'd like to see this uh, go, go globally as well. But yeah, a lot of opportunities. All right, second question. <laughs> And it's around the European Commission funding right. for the change. Um, now, correct me, I, I don't know, right? Because I only have a certain range of vision. Uh, but uh, is there any sort of coordinated project management about actually fixing the issues that they're asking to be fixed? Is there, is there management? Is some providing project management towards those issues? Yeah, so there is, although it's taken a little while to come together. As you might imagine, there's some bureaucracy involved in getting organized with uh, the European Commission. But um, yeah, so we are partnering with uh, a couple of uh, organizations and, and uh, development shops to actually do some of this work uh, based on using the funding that they've given, given us. So, for example, Tag One Consulting is one of our partners. Their project management team is involved. Their development team is involved. And so is some of the Drupal.org Drupal engineering team. Um, I think we could use more, especially coordinating that together with the things that are not in scope for the European Commission initiative, initiative and for the rest of the community at large. There's a lot of energy around it, but I think it, it could still use getting organized. Thank you. Yeah. Can I do it here? Because I'm also. By the way, hopefully some of these questions can be for the rest of the board too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually I have a I have a hard question. Uh, <laughs> oh, good. So there, so in this after that Dries note, then uh, we came together a group of event organizers uh, around the globe, people from Japan and uh, North America, Europe, and other continents. So what are the plans? Uh, this is a question that we are maybe going to be discussing, I think, later today in a roundtable. But what are the plans for events.drupal.org? Mm. And like this authentication around that we can basically use the drupal.org uh, users. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, are there I, any plans? And that's a good question. There, there was a plan developed to have drupal.org be an identity provider so that it could be used by camp websites or other events. Uh, organizers that sort of got put on hold because we wanted to move as quickly as we could on the GitLab stuff. Um, but I think it's absolutely going to come back around for the engineering team's priorities. Um, I'm a little bit less close to that than I used to be five months ago, but <laughs> I do know it's on the list. So, thank you. Other questions from the board? Seems to be a think happy group. Yeah. yeah, I think okay. then we can open it up to community questions for myself or for the board. If anyone has anything they'd like to ask, please come to the microphone. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Uh, one is, uh, how are we as uh, a formal organization helping local communities grow and expand systematically and consistently, right? Um, so that is one thing. Second thing is I run an agency and one of the toughest problems that I run into is in finding um, developers, new developers from the market. So we spend a lot of effort in training new developers. How are we as a community trying to expand and reach out and bring new developers? So are we doing something formally, structurally uh, around these two uh, activities? Thank you. I know these two topics were a big hot topic at the yeah. board meeting last weekend, actually. Does anybody want to try and take the... Let me, I was going to say, I can do a little bit of context setting um, because it, it, and it took me at least a while to, to sort of figure this out. When we use the word uh, governance, it has sort of three simultaneous but different meanings. Um, and you're speaking about just one form. So I want to, so just so, you know, it's like, what's the universe look like? And uh, what's occurred to me, and by the way, I haven't road tested this with anybody, so you'll see the board say he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about in just a second. Um, but, there's, but there's sort of one governance mechanism if you think about Drupal, the project, right? So it's sort of how does CWG, 
the Drupal Association, the technical aspects of the project, right? How do those pieces all sort of get governed at a project level? Then there seems to be another governance question, which is if you just look at the Drupal Association, right? So we've got this board of directors, but we do a variety of things that are related to helping accelerate Drupal. And we're also sort of global in some ways. So it's like, how do you govern just the Drupal Association? And then there's sort of this third piece, which is all of the activities that take place locally that are in some ways connected to Drupal, but that are still very much community organized and should be very much community organized uh, kind of thing. Um, and um, uh, so understand, at least for me, just kind of understanding that was like, oh, that's important. So, and I heard your question as being sort of in this last group, right? Um, and, you know, I know that on the Drupal Association side of this, not necessarily speaking at the project level, at least the first part of your question, you know, I think our ability to provide, you know, sort of resources and support and some structure and that kind of thing um, has been historically very limited. And when we talk about, you know, sort of other opportunities to increase revenue for the Drupal Association, it turns out that in order to do anything, we need m money, I've discovered. Um, <laughs> and people as well, sort of thing, who expect to be paid. I, I don't know why that would be, but here we are. Uh, and, it, and we've also gotten obviously this great volunteer base as well, but they still need some sort of structuring and coordination and support in order to be really effectful, effective and really impactful volunteers. Um, so one of my goals is that, um, at, is that we not, it's not about growing the association to have a bigger association. It's about growing revenue so that we can make investments in exactly the kinds of areas that you're talking about so that, you know, one, you know, sort of country association that needs, you know, maybe some support and some assistance and maybe coordination with other country associations can start to, can, can, can start to get a little bit of, I mean, right now we're just not in a position, right? So to, to be able to do even anything would be, would be useful beyond sort of informal networking and supporting where, and, and, and supporting where we can. So, uh, you know, certainly from my perspective, there's an absolute desire to really facilitate and enrich. And on the training side, I feel just as strongly. I mean, you don't have to talk to very many, for example, agency owners to discover or people who are in, you know, sort of larger organizations that finding Drupal developers can be a little hard in various parts of the world. And, you know, that there's a lot of demand there, which is great on the one hand, but on the other hand, it would be good if we could help on the on, on the on the supply side of that um so you know again how that training takes place and how we help energize that is to, is at least from my perspective very important I, and i'd be curious to hear what other board members are kind of thinking and tell me also what i got wrong i mean i don't have that much to add to be honest um but i do think these are two topics that are top of mind for us as a board. We have talked about them um, and we've talked about them uh, often too in the past. So um, as Adam said, it's a matter of resources uh, and being able to focus on these initiatives. Um, at the same time, I would encourage, um, you know, uh, individuals or organizations in the community to lean in too, like one of the beautiful things about open source is that if you have the time and the resources, you can certainly create an initiative of your own and try to promote it. And we would be happy to help promote the initiative. But like, for example, on the topic of training more uh, Drupal developers, um, I don't know what, what's in existence today, but this is something that is probably very shareable, meaning um, we could share best practices on how to do that, materials on how to do that, you know, and so by all means, if you have the time and, and the resources, don't hesitate to, to, you know, lead an initiative. I think that would be very welcome. 
Um, it doesn't have to be top down, it can be grassroots. I think that's one of our strengths. Uh, yeah, I'll just point you to a, sorry, you, you're asking me a question? Yeah. Um, I'll just point to a couple of resources in the community that already exist for these things that I think perhaps just need more momentum and um, there's probably people who have never heard of them. Um, there's, um, uh, in terms of developing more Drupal talent, there's the Global Training Days initiative that you might have heard of, which, you know, provides a very basic level of like introducing new developers to Drupal, but this is a program that exists, so it'd be great. Um, I know the, the Drupal Association doesn't have a lot of resources, like it's a very small amount of resources to promote this and develop materials, and um, I think that's a, but that's an area for growth where it could be grown into something more substantial and more impactful. Um, and I think that has to come to, from, from the community at this point. Um, and then the other um, thing you mentioned was the event organizer, uh, event organizing, um, having more promotion behind that. So that's one of the things I mentioned that's come out of the governance task force. It's been great. Um, it's been a lot of direction um, put into maybe specific areas where the um, community and um, perhaps the Drupal Association can put an emphasis. So there's progress being made there, you know, slow and steady. So watch for, for new things there too. Michelle, did you want to add anything else? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good question. We're all. <laughs> as, as you can tell, we're can tell engaged on of, the subject. This is yeah. not. <laughs> Um, with, uh, with regards to getting organized locally, uh, the, the DA is supporting local initiatives to set up a local association to get organized locally. Um, so we encourage, uh, 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 well, basically countries to set up a local association uh, and communicate with the DA about, you know, okay, how to set up uh, training days and promote training days. Uh, even organize like uh, things like splash awards, uh, which is good. To, uh, to highlight all the beautiful work that's being done with, uh, with Drupal. Um, so, so yeah, we're looking uh, into uh, an organizational model currently. We've been discussing this uh, and uh, we'll come back to you on that uh, shortly. There are some great examples already. Uh, again, the Netherlands, they have set up a local association. They're very active. They organize special awards, training days, do a lot of promotion for Drupal. Um, and, and so you basically, the questions you were asking, uh, look at the Dutch uh, local association and how they've done it. And if you want to get in contact with them, I can you know, get you in contact with them. I know them personally. I'm, I am from the Netherlands. So, uh, so there's, a, there's a lot of opportunities already out there. Um, uh, and, and yeah, we can guide you uh, in the right direction. So first, I wanted to um, publicly thank Dries. I think uh, it should be said out loud how important it is and was that uh, you highlighted the diversity issue, not just in your keynote, but at the very top of the keynote. I think um, it's incredibly important and shows um, that you know, your eyes on that issue and it's important to you. And I think that uh, communicates something uh, to the rest of the community. So thank you for that. Um, my question is about um, what we're learning from DrupalCon Seattle specifically. Uh, I think it's obviously a lot of good news based on the expectations around uh, attendance um, and, and a lot of the learnings that you highlight and shared under, understandably because of that were good things. But I'm curious uh, what so far has been discussed as things that you might want to change um, or learnings that like things that could be done better given this new format um, for Drupal cons going forward that's a really good question and part of it we're gonna you know we'll do the usual attendee survey and that sort of thing so that we can have more data to drive the decision but just observationally from the first few days and from just the communication leading up to the event there's a, there's a few different things that I think we could do so um, I, I very briefly touched on the notion of 
um, a little bit of more sort of targeted ticket pricing perhaps, particularly around the nonprofit space, but maybe some other areas, and just a little bit more opportunity for that sort of a thing. Um, I think as far as I understand it, our, our um, Monday, Tuesday content pretty much was all instantly sold out. And so we're gonna need to, clearly it was great to have more training and more summit content, but we want more capacity so that people who get here on site have, have a place to go. So that's gonna be something to address as well. Um, you know, I think there's a lot, there's definitely a lot of study to be done on, on how this kind of finishes out. Um, I don't know that I have a, a single key change that we'd really immediately make, but yeah, I'd be happy to talk with you about it more. Yeah, I would just add one specific piece of feedback from sure, us yeah. on that is that as a uh, personally and part of a group that's been attending DrupalCon for a long time in its previous form and yeah. now moving to this new form, I think that the communication uh, and marketing around what is this new DrupalCon um, was could had room for improvement. Sure. Um, I think that even in hearing um, some people within the DA speak about what this new DrupalCon was in, in public venues, uh, there was a lacking of a, of a clear message. Um, and so that made us hard, but hard when people would come to us and ask, like, I felt like we should know the answer to this. We've been going to DrupalCon for a long time and it was a struggle for us to explain that to them. Sure. It's exciting to me to see that despite that in some ways, it seems like it's, this new vision is so successful. But I would uh, say that, um, I guess I would caution us to assume that um, just because the numbers are up doesn't mean that there is even greater room for improvement on top of that with some tuning on that. Totally, I think that's absolutely true. And actually the communication piece is, is, a, really good, is a really good one and is on our minds. I think, I think we can really learn from, from this year on that front. <laughs> Let's see if that works. Okay, so along those lines, I'm one of the um, volunteers for the content and digital marketing trap. So we have a ton of feedback already. Great. So great. we will definitely be getting back to you on that. Um, great. A lot of it did, has, does have to do with communications. Sure. Even this morning, people not being able to find us. Right. And okay. I think a lot of people ended up um, at the Dries note and in the builder track, and they're not really showing up where we are. So. Yeah, so there's a lot to work on, but then again, we have a lot of great speakers, and I think great. that that track is exciting and yeah, can definitely I think really be expanded is. upon. Um, my concern has to do uh, with the small agencies. Um, we've been around a long time. Um, most of us are supporting a lot of the small nonprofits, so we're very aligned with them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my colleagues aren't here this year. And that troubles me. Sure. And when I talk to them, it has to do with cost. It has to do with not being able to be a supporting, you know, at the supporter level, um, not being able to um, be an Aquia partner. Um, so the smaller we are, the we have great reach. We're working like I am on the content and digital marketing track. I'm also yep. an organizer for GovCon in DC every year. Yep. Um, I speak every year. We're great advocates. Right. Um, my, my company has been around for 15 years yeah. doing Drupal yeah. and that's all we do is Drupal. So we're not like, oh yeah, we do a little of this other stuff, but maybe a little. No, all we do is Drupal. So I would love to hear about um, other initiatives that you might have to bring the small agencies along, make them feel like they're more welcome, make it more affordable for us to be involved in DrupalCon and in other activities you know, in the, in the DA. Great. I mean, it's really good to hear. Um, and, and I think it's really important to us that you're here and that you will be able to be here and hopefully have more of your team here the next time. So, um, yeah, I don't know that we have the like an immediate thought. We're still learning from this week, like as we're in the middle of it, but I'd love to talk with you more. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah, sorry. Um, so, so if I could, I, so I would say the, the agency leadership track, uh, was designed in large part to bring along smaller agencies and make them sort of a part of what's going on. And I think um, if, if the cost of that is, is high, I think that's good feedback. And I think that's something that the DA should be thinking about. But I think that the agency leadership track I was involved in organizing has a lot of specific content that I think would be helpful to agencies of all size so we can sort of share on that, on that front. Um, 
However, not everyone wants to be over there talking in the echo chamber and not over here learning. So I would say it, it is a challenge to balance these things, like to be there and here at the same time is hard. Uh, so maybe I'm, I'm providing feedback, right? In the process of answering your question. Yeah, I but I think that is the intent of the agency leadership track at least. I, sorry, I just wanted to say like, um, that the small agencies are critically important to Drupal and that that is not lost on us, definitely not lost on me. And just look at the data, for example, um, most of the contributions to Drupal come from smaller agencies versus larger agencies. So it would be a huge mistake to leave the smaller agencies behind. Yeah, so. yeah and we're great, and, and we're great evangelists. Um, as far as when I say colleagues aren't here, we all know each other. So it's not just who works in our agency, but we know all the other agencies around the country. I mean, we've spent 15 years getting to know each other. Right. And so there's a lot of people missing this year from my space, the people I want to network with, the people I partner with, they're not here. So we definitely do need to think about how to, how to get us back engaged. That grants and scholarships work is meant yeah. to help with that. It's meant well. to do that, and, you know, yeah. I think the, yeah, the, the, the issue with the scholarship program is it's targeted specifically at individuals for the most part, and right. I think we need a comparable program for the sort of agency, small agency or small business kind of thing, um, yeah, to go along with the nonprofit concept that we talked about yes. before. I think and in fact, the, we had a nonprofit call with the nonprofit community and, and some of the agencies. Yeah, and I joined so, one of those uh, um, uh, a month ago, maybe something great. like that, yeah. Yeah, so we're, it's definitely on our radar. We'd love to talk more about how we can make that happen. Fantastic, thank great. you so thank much. You. But I think they need it next chapter, like next chapter. Small person, um, sorry. So I think the immediate next step or action to take here is just to better understand the data. Right, so if, if um, smaller agencies are not coming or are not participating um, to um, really dig into the data to, to better understand why, um, it could be some of the things that we've discussed in this room, but I think we also need to be open to the possibility that it could be some other factor and that by um, starting to, sur you know, to surmise what it could be that we might be growing um, blinder to true root causes. So. Um, I think it's a fantastic um, uh, conversation that um, through really digging into the data um, will help us understand how to really fix it. Hi, um, I've got uh, a comment first and then a couple of questions. Um, first off, thank you for the summits this year. Um, the healthcare summit was freaking awesome. Um, and uh, it was it was super super useful. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, it was it was really terrific. It was a valuable, good use of time. Um, I was surprised because I was one of the really super early uh, ticket buyers when uh, I bought my ticket. I didn't even know that there was going to be tracks. Um, and I just sort of ended up in the builder track, which is OK. I guess that's fine. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it was a surprise to me when there was an additional cost around the, uh, around the, uh, the summits. That's it, okay, but surprises aren't necessarily a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that leads me to my first question, which is, um, I'm curious about the decision to compress the regular session, track session, um, uh, uh, sessions into two days. Um, that seems really, really tight and really um, almost almost uh, frenetic to me. That's the first question that I've got. And then the second is, um, it, it, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a community organizer. I, I, uh, I, run, uh, I help run uh, Drupal Camp Colorado. Um, and we, we use a, a, a local fiscal receiver, but talking to some of my colleagues um, who are involved in other camps, uh, it came to my attention, I didn't know this happened, that uh, the association is no longer acting as a fiscal receiver for, for, uh, for, for camps. I'm really curious about that decision as well. Sure. So um, let me sort through that. So the, the first question was about the decision to do two days of session content in particular. Um, yeah, that actually, it was a combination of factors. We have so many days in a week. And 
uh, just as you mentioned, there was the uh, quote freaking awesome uh, healthcare summit. And we really wanted to be able to have two days of that kind of content. Um, uh, it was something that had been increasingly valued by our attendees according to the surveys and things like that um, uh, from some of the previous events. Um, and fitting that into the week uh, was really important. So that was one element. Another element of it that we heard uh, actually came from the track chairs, just the volunteer committee that picks the sessions because um, the, uh, they're not selected directly by us. We engage the volunteers to do all that. Um, and that, this was first proposed by that group because they were looking at the data and seeing that we basically just had huge amounts of attrition on the final day sessions. Um, they were not necessarily particularly well attended. Um, and some, some of them were, but um, what they suggested is if we could move that into a format where the second day was a full day instead of being a third, a third day that was a half day, uh, that we would still be able to really hit the kind of core impact. Um, so we have adopted and experimented with that. Uh, the number of session hours available, of course, is about the same actually, but naturally you can't be in two places at once. So that's certainly a factor uh, when the sessions stack up. Uh, so that was the logic and reasoning behind it. I don't know to what extent um, you know, we will revisit that, but um, we'll, think, we'll certainly think about it and look at the feedback as, as it comes in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Right. Yeah. Sure. Fair enough. Um, second question uh, was about the fiscal sponsorships. Yeah. Um, I don't know if. Yeah, Jacob. Um, so I, I can speak quite well to the fiscal sponsorship since um, for those who might know, not know my background, I've been with the association for quite a long time. Um, and fiscal sponsorship was one of the things that I helped champion. It was it's one of these ideas because I was running Drupal Camp at NYC and I was like, this is very painful and you need a fiscal sponsorship and we have a 501c3. Uh, and we did, and, and the association ran it for a number of years. The long story short there is it's expensive uh, it's very complex to run, um, and it doesn't meet all the needs worldwide. Um, so several years ago, I think this decision was about three, three years ago, three, two and a half, three, somewhere in there, um, the decision was made to wind it down. And part of that decision was not, oh, it's too complex, it's too expensive, we gotta get rid of it. It was, there's other things in the marketplace that take care of this. It's become easier to start your own nonprofit. It's become easier to build your own association. So there's other things that, that the camps can do to do it on their own. And they, and they really should. It empowers them. It gives them the, the controls. It gives them the reins. It gives them an actual literal debit card to take their own money out. Um, and there's, there's resources. So there's some blog posts I know that are, that are put up. There's um, some people helping out there. So if there's a camp member that doesn't know about these, reach out and we'll get them in touch. But uh, Basically, it was a it was a good idea. It worked for a little while. Uh, it wasn't as we, we planned. It was a good experiment, and its time has come. You know, we got to experiment, iterate, and try the next thing. Does that answer? Yeah. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> Topic change. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, first off, thank thank you all, members and the board, the body at large. Uh, you're probably getting a lot of comments and you hopefully you have some real thick skin and I, I hope that you're being thanked more than you're being yelled at. Uh, don't, don't tell me which way that goes, but uh, I just hope it's the better thing. Um, so uh, my brothers and sisters here in Seattle um, and local 15, the union are taking good care of us and that's fantastic. I've talked to a couple. I myself am a journeyman local 30 in Indianapolis. Uh, fun fact, IATSE.org, our union national, that's a Drupal site. I didn't have anything to do with it, sadly. But I still pay my dues. So, um, so I've worked a lot of conferences, I've attended a lot of conferences, and a lot of us have attended a lot of conferences, but I sat in the convention center in Indianapolis and attended so many conferences. Uh, Association of Bishops, uh, ACS, uh, American College of Sports Medicine, Salesforce, Exact Target, just big stuff. And uh, there was one common thread that I saw in, in predominantly almost all of these events. There was an element of frivolity and silliness, and now you know where I'm going with this. Um, <laughs> so I am here, ladies and gentlemen, to represent the hashtag why so serious uh, subculture within our group in asking what happened to the pre-note? And I will give you, there are some super cringe-worthy, 
oh, kind of things that happen there. And some years have been better than others. But having attended so many conferences, and I know we have too, and I may not have the, the most you know, in the room, but the, the silliness you know, and the frivolity and the fun is really important. And thank you for putting it at the, at the trivia, so you're going to bring that up. But the pre-note. I thought that was a surprise and we weren't supposed to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's a surprise with Jam. But I would love to hear, and, and, and the way he found out was a, a little uncool, um, if his representation to me and if my understanding of his representation was correct. But um, and, and the slides talked about things that have changed. Didn't mention the pre-notes pre -notes gone. It mentioned things that are continuing on. Didn't mention the pre-notes. So, um, you know, I think we would like to hear a little bit of a story on that. And uh, you'll find us to be pretty level-headed, but we'd really like to hear it. Um, sure, I, um, I'll, I'll talk as much as I know about the early part of that conversation, because some of the people involved in the early level of that decision-making are actually not at the DA anymore, but um, I understood the, the thrust of that decision and I, and I kind of agree with it, so I feel like I can speak to it. Um, part of it, uh, in this case, again, it was related to schedule compression and wanting to promote the Aaron Winborn Award and have that be present at the first keynote, which is always the most well attended keynote. I think it brought a real powerful community feel and community message, not in the same way as the silliness of the pre note, right? But in a way that I think is really true to who we are and to our values. Um, I think that the pre note itself, like it's something that I've certainly enjoyed in the past. As you said, sometimes it's great, sometimes it misses the mark a little bit. Um, it's something we get feedback about. Um, as you were talking about board feedback before, it's both kinds <laughs> um, uh, quite a bit. Um, and so we'd like to try this example at Trivia Night because I feel like it culturally fits a little bit better in that spot. Like it's still a, a core element of the community activity. It's something that's like, a lot of us rally around and go to and don't miss every time. And I think that might be a good place for it. Um, but we'll see. I mean, I think that's kind of where we're at. I don't know if that fully answered your question, but okay. I hope that helps. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure we have time for any more questions and I'm not sure we have any more questions. So I think we'll probably conclude here. Thank you everybody. Oh, did, did wait. You, did you have... I'll make a couple. Yeah, please. Okay. Go, yeah. Go, go. <laughs> so, not only, never mind here, but I'll throw, I'll just throw some comments that I had um, to some of the things. The two versus three days, uh, I too am disappointed. Um, it's a long flight to get here from Buffalo, New York to here for two days. It's possibly, especially most of my team is remote. It's the only time it's our annual meeting every day, every year that we get to actually see each other. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, it's, and it's possibly the only time they ever get, you know, out of their office, out of their home, we get to see each other. So sure. extended would be phenomenal. Um, the smaller agencies, I'll throw out uh, one of the agencies who I met here, Monarch Digital, who I believe built your website for Drupal Camp 2011, somewhere. Um, they're not here, and I'm really surprised. Um, we still use them. Um, sure. So, yeah, I think that, uh, and it seems that there are less people here. Uh, agree, and I'm not a, I'm not a small, I'm AAA. I, you know, I'm not a, I have um, the marketing track and, and, and um, um, content track is phenomenal. I have a graphic designer here who knows nothing, has nothing to do with whatsoever. I have a content writer here who has nothing to do with where typically it was, it was PHP developers and happened to be the director who just wanted to get out of the office with me. Um, but another, so, so on that, another track that I would like to recommend is, you know, like that the boss, like why should my boss be here? The VP, the, 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 the CIO, my IT department who is Microsoft all the way, um, you know, they want to rebuild our, our, um, our uh, intranet with SharePoint, uh, you know, oh, yeah. how, <laughs> they can call me, how and I can tell them they, I to do but, but I don't see those people here and I don't see any reason of programming for those people to be here. So how do I, you know, and everyone else of the uh, large organizations. I think, I think that's, uh, sorry, I don't know if you're, no, yeah, you, well, you I was just to address that particular point. We did have an executive summit all day yesterday that was specifically for business right. decision makers or I, it was, IT department decision makers. It was a very small, I believe it was a very, not that many people. I was invited to it yeah. uh, a week prior. 
Yeah. Um, been coming here since 2011. Didn't know anything about it, but I still wouldn't say that that the remainder of the week is necessarily tailored. Like, what are they going to really stay here for? For the rest of the week maybe the one day yeah well exactly that uh, we experimented with this first to last october and part of it was that a lot of them said even if there was a full week they'd probably only be able to fly in for well, one day or, or, <laughs> or valid but yeah. but then yeah and, and so then that brings me right into the there is so much information um so you asked about developer training um uh, your your like promotion of of drupal your new videos and whatnot like uh, as far as training developers there are companies out there that have you know videos uh how to learn and whatnot but like yeah. when our transition very early from seven to eight uh yeah drupal seven to drupal eight we didn't know what we needed to learn so like in your the dry's note earlier today i wrote uh, three times drupal seems to be um committed to these and i wrote down symphony composer and, and json api now, going into Drupal 8 very, very early on, we didn't know what we were supposed to be using. So I would throw out that maybe um, I don't want you to compete and, and go against some of these companies that are in the business of training, but um, is, it, is there just too much information for me to try and sift through and my programmers to know what we should be learning, what's coming up next, what is changing, uh, or does Drupal Association need to be Printing out, you know, a, a list of, you know, hey guys, we're moving from X to Y, and you really need to brush up on that. Yeah, and, and I think it's a combination of the two, somewhere in between. But yeah, thank you. That was a great thank list. You. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, I think we need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. Chairman, I to adjourn. All right. All right. Thank you all very, very much. We appreciate you know, your, your time, commitment, and passion around all things Drupal. And uh, we're going to keep moving along. Uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. And we hope to see you all in Amsterdam. Come, it's a lovely place. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Not yet. Yeah, we're